right, we're back. All right, so what we're about to do now is this thing has a couple of, of flashes that we're going to be knocking out on it. It's part of an uh, RRT, Rapid Response Transmittal. So part of the PDI, the pre-delivery inspection on these things, is they have us come in and we're doing those four flashes everyone's talking about, the flashes that they have to, you know, they're bricking if they get the flashes and whatnot. So we're going to do these four flashes. I'm going to talk about what we're doing, why we're doing it, kind of give you guys a little peek underneath the front so you can see what's going on with all the stuff that's under there. So here's what we're doing. <clears throat> this is our TSB that came out here. Um, these are applicable to all the 24s. Um, so when they come off the truck, they're gonna require us to do the four flashes that are for these. And these are the reasons that we're doing them, is uh, you, the customer, may experience some of these issues. You know, reduce power, the vehicle won't shift out of park, you get a turtle icon, you get a red wrench illuminated on there, and it'll set this DTC for your park pole motor being stuck. Um, <clears throat> so we're gonna go through here, gonna talk about what we're gonna do. It's kind of some uh, non-technical information there. First thing we're going to do is we're going to get in here. We're going to remove this uh, connector on the radiator fan. During the flashes, the contactors with the high voltage battery open up, and a lot of the power ends up running off that little 12 volt battery, and it's a lot of juice. So even with our really fancy charger hooked up to it here, it's still going to suck a lot of power, and we don't want to corrupt this flash and damage the vehicle anyway. Um, so this is uh, what we're going to be doing there. After that, we're going to proceed into software updates which is all pretty easy, and we'll talk about that once we get this conglomeration of plastic off. That way you guys can kind of see what's popping around under there too. So I've got my procedure up here pulled up to get all this plastic off the front, though we can see everything going there. I'm gonna do this off camera, just gonna require a couple hands, uh, but I'll, got, I'll show you what's happening in there once I get all this plastic off. All right, we got all that plastic off. Now you can see all the junk that's under here. We've got a big series of coolant pumps. Drive motor A, lots of orange cables, and that's what that guy looks like with your frunk removed. But now that we got that all off, we've got our scan tool hooked up. I'm over here, so what we're going to do is take a couple breadcrumbs. I'm doing a vehicle scan report and a configuration report. And I'm going to save everything before I do these series of flashes, just in case something goes wrong. I got something to fall back on and kind of recover this guy, and uh, I can uh, put in a ticket with technical support, and they'll be able to help me fix it just in case something does go wrong. So I'm going to take these reports, um, like I said, we've got our scan tool hooked up, then I'll put our battery charger on the jump post. There's some conflicting information. <clears throat> going through the TSB here, they do say, they tell me that it's acceptable to charge uh, from the jump post uh, with a 15 amp charger. Uh, there are some other publications that are telling us to charge directly to that 12 volt battery in the trunk. But I'm going to follow this guy exactly as worded, so if something goes wrong, it ain't my fault, I did exactly what they told me to do. So we've got our 50 amp charger hooked up to the jump post, applying voltage, we've got our front removed. Right under here, the front radiator fan, I've disconnected that connector there, so that way he can't run and then suck all the juice out of the 12 volt during the flash. So that first module is getting his software update. I'm just going to keep rocking and rolling to the next uh, three, because there's not really not much to see, just a big loading bar as he gets his software updates. Um, if there is an issue after certain things, uh, let's say the uh, BBCM, if I have a, uh, a DTC set, a code, uh, I get several different ones. It's kind of like a branching diagnostic. If it says this code after this flash, I'll proceed one way. If it doesn't, I'll proceed the other. And then once I get to the bottom and we do a couple relearns and resets, I'll show you guys that. So everything went smooth with the four software updates. Uh, there's one more procedure that it has us do after the four software updates. Again, if there were no kind of codes, that would branch us off in a different uh, diagnostic tree. When all four completed, we're going to calibrate the front wheel disconnects. So this thing has basically locking hubs on the front. There are these little actuator motors with a geared ring. Those live on the front hubs. Uh, so they're able to manually disconnect and reconnect the front wheels. If you want to do two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive, this guy's really smart. He knows when he wants uh, certain wheels applied and when he doesn't. And we're just going to go through. We're going to do a calibration on this, which is just a procedure in the scan tool. Um, and that will be it. So I was able to calibrate the wheel and disconnects. There's no DTCs. Everything went great. Uh, so now we've completed 25-013 power cube flash. Uh, so I'm gonna get this guy buttoned back up and get the frunk installed. Um, and then I'll go out and test drive him just to make sure everything's good. So, you know, when you hear other people say these things came right from the factory needing flashes, they had to be updated by the dealer. Uh, this is a 24. You know, they pumped these guys out. They were sitting on the, the, the factory lot. And in that time, they were able to isolate a couple concerns. 
Uh, the vehicle had already been produced. Um, and so while they were working on that concern, they were sitting out there. They shipped them to us and we're able to go in and there's not really an issue with the car. What we're trying to do is go ahead and prevent an issue from happening in the future. So we're, we're doing these updates preemptively before the customer takes them. That way you guys don't have an issue um, as soon as you take delivery. And it's pretty, pretty common. You know, there's a lot of vehicles in right here. A lot of them are new and a lot of times, you know, before anybody ever buys them, we end up having to do a couple of things that, you know, Stellantis is isolated and we want to make sure you guys have a really good experience on whatever vehicle we sell you. And that's a wrap. Everything's done. All software is all at its latest rendition and everything went smooth with no DTCs. So like I said, I'll go out and test drive this guy and make sure that he's good. So as far as I'm aware, every one of these is going to get this uh, RSU, the software updates, uh, the Wagoneers. Uh, Wagoner S and the Chargers will all get these as soon as they arrive to the dealership. Future models probably won't need this. They'll address this before they start shipping them out. But as you can see, it's just, just some software updates. Um, and it's just to, to make sure that something doesn't go wrong when you take delivery of the vehicle and prevent any issues from happening. So I'm going to make the next video coming up soon. Another RRT that we have is they've identified that there's an issue with the buttons that are going here. And I'm going to be replacing this assembly pulling the radio out so we can get into here and all of these will be replaced on most of the vehicles that have already been released so if you already have one of these your dealership will probably be contacting you here shortly um, you'll bring it in and we're going to replace that that switch bank so thanks for watching hope you guys kind of get an idea of what's you know going on underneath the hood and then uh hopefully uh kind of change your mind about these things kind of see what's underneath the hood and stuff thanks for watching